Lawmakers work frantically to pass scores of bills before a midnight deadline, but a lot of legislation got left behind. I am still continuing to champion this issue. So much more work needs to be done. We'll look at what's next for some bills that did not make it. Some of the top priorities for Texas conservatives are still alive at the Capitol, but not all Republicans are happy. The leadership is going to have a lot to answer for to the conservative uh, grassroots base. Why party leaders say they're not satisfied with the moves this session. They set health policy statewide at the Capitol, but which lawmakers are getting the COVID-19 vaccine and which ones are not? We investigate coming up. Produced from the Capitol in Austin and airing statewide, this is the award-winning State of Texas. Hello, and thank you for joining us. I'm Josh Hinkle. A frantic scene in the Texas House as lawmakers rush to approve scores of bills before Thursday's midnight deadline. As the final seconds ticked down, lawmakers hurried to pass one last bill. Listen. Members, the next bill on the calendar is HB 48. The Senate companions over eligible. The chair lays out on second reading. SB 45, the clerk read the bill. As sexual har harassment protections, staff reading relating to the prohibition against sexual harassment in the workplace. Chair Riders, Ms. Wiener, explain the bill. Sexual harassment protections, move passage. <laughs> Question of the clerk, pass the third reading at SB 45. Oh, <laughs> please out. It took just 19 seconds to pass the bill to expand the definition of sexual harassment in the workplace. Democrat Erin Zwiener got that bill through before the cutoff, but she said earlier battles over controversial social issues blocked other important legislation. We get more work done in the building when we don't talk about LGBTQ rights and, and attacking trans kids. We get more work in the building when we don't try and roll back abortion rights. We get more work done when we don't try to suppress votes. One hot button issue for conservatives failed to beat the deadline. A bill to ban doctors from performing gender reassignment surgery on children did not reach the floor. But conservatives still consider the session a success so far. They've worked to keep other key promises to constituents. Whether it's constitutional carry or the heartbeat bill, I think when it comes to defining what conservative policy is, no matter how you do it, if it's fiscally conservative, socially conservative, I think that there is a, a hook to hang a hat on regardless. The House deadline blocked a bill to improve how the state tracks data on mothers who die or barely survive childbirth. The bill could still advance as an amendment to another bill, but the author says chances are slim. I've looked for so many other uh, bills and vehicles to try to add this legislation to it, but unfortunately there was very little legislation done this session on maternal mortality. And uh, I think that speaks and underscores why I am still continuing to champion this issue. So much more work needs to be done. Our Mothers Erased investigation in 2019 found problems with how Texas tracks maternal deaths and near deaths. Theory's bill would create a work group to establish the first statewide online maternal mortality and morbidity data registry. A bill to reform the Texas Commission on Law Enforcement died before the deadline. With that, I move to postpone HB 1550 to June 3rd, 2021. State Representative John Sirier pulled House Bill 1550 earlier in the week. It would likely have given T. Cole the power to sanction officers accused of misconduct or unethical policing. The commission grants law enforcement certifications for peace officers, jailers, and telecommunicators across Texas. Right now, the only time T. Cole can take action is when an officer is convicted of a felony or a high-level misdemeanor. We've reported on the bill as part of our Bargaining the Badge series. Our investigators detailed how hundreds Hundreds of law enforcement officers used their license as a bargaining tool to avoid jail or prison. You can link to our series in this story in the Texas Politics section of this station's website. Some of this session's most controversial legislation is still on track to pass. State Senator Brian Hughes co-authored the Heartbeat Bill and Senate Bill 7 to tighten election restrictions. West Rappaport sat down with Hughes to get his perspective on the next steps. So let's talk a little bit about um, First off, Senate Bill 7, uh, the House made some changes. They're sending it back to you. I guess what is your assessment of, of uh, that legislation as it comes back? Are you happy with the changes? Is that something you can work with? Yes, the process is working just like it's supposed to. We've worked with our friends over in the House. Representative Briscoe Kane knows the election code very well, knows the House rules very well. And so uh, the work they did in committee and then on the floor, it gets us in good shape to go to a conference committee. You know how that goes where the House and Senate versions are worked out. 
And so I think we're going to come out of the conference committee with a really good bill. This gives you the opportunity, you and, and, and Chairman Kane, to, to rework the legislation uh, in, in the conference committee. Um, some people in, in this building have, have brought up a concern that, you know, it would, it would allow you guys to rewrite the bill back there uh, and, and, you know, take, take things that maybe some Democrats have added in and wipe them out. Can you respond to that? Well, the conference committee will have five members from the House, five members from the Senate, and then those members have to be voted on by the, each House. And then those conference committee members will come up with a proposal for the House and Senate, and it's got to be passed by a majority of both the House and the Senate. So there's plenty of checks in the process. You know how that goes. The conference committee is normally where those final details get worked out. So it's a process. It's, people are familiar with it. And there's uh, all along the way, there's input. And again, it's got to be voted on. It's got to get a majority of both the House and the Senate before it goes to the governor. So it's going to work like it should. What do you say to people who say, you know, it's great that you're passing a heartbeat bill. It's great that you're passing permitless carry. But what about COVID and what about ARCOT? You bet. So the COVID relief bill is already through the Senate. It's been worked on by a lot of parties to get it right. It's over in the House. Do we think that's going to pass? Again, to give folks certainty as to what the responsibilities are, what's expected of them in terms of uh, dealing with COVID and what's a business's potential liability if someone gets sick. So that bill is on track, should be fine. Also, ERCOT, man, that storm that you and I talked about so much and so many people have worked on, uh, we're going to come out of here with some strong protections to do a couple of things, to protect those people uh, from getting crazy bills and protect people from bankrupting their, their businesses in some cases over mistakes made by the government after that storm. Also, we've already passed strong bills in the Senate to require winterization and to require that if you're a power company, if you're a utility company, you've got to have extra fuel on site. We saw what happened. Many of our, many of our power generations, companies that ran on natural gas, couldn't get natural gas. And then the natural gas plants couldn't get electricity. It was a, you know this, it was a nightmare. So we're taking steps to make sure that never happens again. The storm we can't control, that was a 100-year storm, maybe a 150-year storm. We can't control that, but we can do our part to make sure we're ready. So that's important. Conservatives cheered legislation like the heartbeat bill, election restrictions, and permitless carry. But leaders of the state's Republican Party are less than happy. The leadership is going to have a lot to answer for to the conservative uh, grassroots base here in the state of Texas. Party leaders say there has not been enough progress on the Texas GOP's eight legislative priorities. Some of those bills are still pending, but others did not pass before the House bill deadline. Now the Republican Party of Texas plans to launch its own scorecard to grade how Republican lawmakers voted on the party's legislative priorities. Party Chairman Alan West gave lawmakers a D grade so far. Bills are already reaching the governor's desk. We'll look at some of the first pieces of legislation from this session to become new Texas laws. They represent you at the Capitol, but how are they leading by example when it comes to getting the vaccine for COVID-19? Our investigators survey lawmakers making health policy statewide coming up. And later, remembering a pioneer in politics and PR, how some influential Texans paid tribute to a man who helped shape the state's political landscape.